What's going on, people? We are back with a new episode of the Conscious Approach Podcast. Uh, this is going to be episode number 26. And as you can see, this is special on a couple of fronts. Firstly, this is the inaugural episode in which we have a guest contributor to the platform to speak on issues. So to my right, which uh, um, in the camera, it looks like it's to my left, but it's really to my right. Uh, we have a local artist here in the Tallahassee area named Tight. She reached out to me. Uh, how, how long ago was that? Maybe... Like a Maybe about a month ago. Yeah. yeah, she reached out saying, "Yo, I like the content that you guys put out. Um, if you're, you know, up to the idea, I feel like I can contribute to the platform and you know help you grow the community as well as help to get the word out on several things that I got going on." So, we had been playing around with the idea of having guest contributors on the platform. So I said, "This is a perfect opportunity. She seems cool enough, you know." To bring her Hopefully. in, bring her into the fold. So we thought, why not? Um, and and I also thought that it was a good idea because of what we are going to be talking about in this video. So if you are familiar with uh, the content that we've been putting out, especially lately, especially with all of the social social justice stuff going on, we've been talking a lot about the importance of people acquire people specifically people of color, disenfranchised people. People from low-income backgrounds, so on and so forth, uh, it, it, prioritizing, gaining, uh, prioritizing, acquiring a mentality that sees you shifting your mindset in such a way that you are thinking more about ownership over your agency, because that's the true source of freedom. Uh, in this society, especially nowadays in 2020, it is my belief, and I've said this on several occasions, that the modern-day manifestation of racism is not... Out, it's, not, it's not overt um, racist behavior towards people of color. Um, it is the ability to control the means by which a group of people can acquire economic freedom, generational wealth, uh, th th things like passive income. These are things that we just simply don't have a knowledge of by and large as both black people and just people of color in general, because it's less about race per se, and it's more about the type of background that you come from. In all likelihood, if you come from a low socioeconomic background, you don't have the type of knowledge about certain things like ownership and, and asset accumulation and the ability to generate generational wealth because you aren't, we aren't taught those types of things. We're taught to work hard, get a job, and then continue to work like a dog, and then you die <laughs> with nothing to speak for it. So... Something that I saw that was very interesting to me last week, a person who I personally admire in the entertainment, uh, Dave Chappelle, he, uh, you know, he he has his own deal with Netflix now. It's like forty million dollars, fifty million dollars, something like that. He retains one hundred percent of the pro, one hundred percent of the proceeds for uh, of that. Thank God. And he was doing a stand up, and a clip of his previous stand of his latest stand up went viral where he was basically telling the audience in the stands that if they appreciate his work and if they appreciate what he has done, that if they ever see reruns of his TV show, Chappelle show, syndicated show from the early 2000s that he created, along with his partner, Neil Brennan, who's a, a white guy, I'm not sure how, why I felt the need to say that, but for some reason I felt the need to say that, um, them two together, but it was mostly Chappelle's art, created Chappelle's show. It was a classic. It was a classic sketch comedy show that ran on Comedy Central from 2003 to 2005. And it was groundbreaking because it played upon a lot of tropes in society that tackles how America perceives black people and black culture for the most part. It was way ahead of its time by, yeah. at, least, by at least 15, 20 years yeah. because the things that we talk about today, he was doing this stuff when I was a junior in high school and no one was really paying attention. Everybody the thought was, people are making exactly, today, I, he was making. Yeah, 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 I feel like he needed to be getting paid off of that. You know, so it, it, when I was a junior in high school and he was doing this stuff and everybody just laughed and thought it was a joke. No one really understood what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And fast forward to 2020 is, you know, well known what happened when he left the show. 
he turned he he turned away from fifty million dollars because the establishment was trying to say, "Hey, Dave Chappelle, even though you created this, and you should retain the vast majority of the profits from this art that you created, we want to throw you this fifty million dollars, and you should be thankful for that." While we bankroll off of the art that you created, for the most part. And he wasn't with it. He didn't appreciate the notion of that. And he turned oh, he turned his back on $50 million. And everybody thought that he was crazy for doing so. Did he? It, I didn't. I never knew what really all the details from that was. Like, I, was it? It wasn't like a creative issue. It was like the money. No, well, it, they wanted him to work more and do more. But they didn't want to pay him commiserate with that. Okay. But, and, and I think. He, the, he, but he did say, too, that they wanted him to do more stuff that degraded black, black people. people yeah, yeah so I thought people. it was something. Yeah, about yeah. well, he, the thing is, he said that he noticed after a while that people weren't getting what he was doing. And and a lot of this comes from the fact that there are laughing, a lot, the yeah, there are not a lot of us who are in these rooms who make these big corporate decisions. Yeah. So you know, They were laughing at him. Yeah, right. So he realized that they didn't get what he was doing. It was about how you view us, but you thought that I, you think that I'm just making fun of my own people. You did have to kind of tap in on the exact angle he was coming. You yeah. know, maybe not everybody. Yeah, but got I think, it. so that's Black why people. I think we were like, yeah. But I think he 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 made references to that when he made future public appearances. He was like, at this point, I just don't know if society is ready for that he, he, he right. his exact words were i don't know that people are responsible enough yeah but the point is as intellectually sound as he is as smart a guy as he is and, I, and as highly respected as he is uh he still serves as a cautionary tale to me because even though he had his wits about him and he was smarter than some of these other artists who get taken advantage of, you know, especially in the music industry, mm -hmm. uh, he was still somebody who, at least before he walked away, was being taken advantage of by Comedy Central because they wanted to pay him pennies on the dollar for his work that he created. I think that's what made the what he put out recently so impactful because we're like, Dave, like, yeah, even he is dealing with, you know, this, this right, stuff, exactly, the same things, you know? exactly. So that's why I wanted, to, and especially with you two. Having a background in music, I thought that it was great to have both of you want to talk about this because I can imagine, I'm not really, I love music. I've been a fan and been a part of the culture of music my whole life, but I'm not intimately involved with it personally. Mm -hmm. I'm just somebody who kind of listens to it and follows it. But for you guys, I can only imagine how important it is being an artist, how much you prioritize owning your work because at the end of the day that is most important than others and i think that it's a message that i can't talk about enough but because um for as long as we continue to be disenfranchised mm -hmm. our status and you've heard me say this many times our status as disenfranchised people will never cease unless we acquire and own more and that includes owning our art. Mm -hmm. Even when we want to be able to leverage that art for profit by partnering with larger companies who want to take advantage of that. Yeah. And you know, I, I just think that it's important. And, and Dave Chappelle serves as an let example of that. Let me sell it. Yeah. Let me give it away. And, I, and, 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 and Chappelle, who is someone who is up here to me in terms of how respected and smart he is, especially amongst black people, somebody who when he speaks, people listen. He was someone who dealt with that and as as much money as day as Chappelle show is made for CBS Viacom he sees zero percent of that and it's it, it, it really is sad but you know what 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 did you have to say about just you know all of that the notion of ownership how important that is how important it is for us to think about those kinds of things when we're trying to make it in this world and kind of you know not to be cliche but rise above I yeah, know it's crazy. I think, truthfully, like when it comes to ownership, and you know, with most people in general, but with amongst our community, like, um, I think it's that that natural factor that we have of that feel good, and I think that's too much going on. Too much, we get too much caught in the feel good. It feels good to get out and protest. It feels good to speak on ownership, but. Like y'all say, y'all surprised and people are like, oh, this Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. But from my eyes, you know, I think it's pretty clear. I'm not surprised because 
I know where the root of it started. And it started from Dave Chappelle leveraging his talent. And that's just what happened. So you leverage your talent. And he's not thinking about 2020, maybe. Like I said, this was back in 2000. And you know what I mean? So, like, he's a very smart man. But at that time, he was a smart kid. But like any of us, when you're 20, you don't really don't understand your power. So, you know what I mean? So then it gets to the tour yeah. where he just gets more involved. But I think what people say, the ownership sounds good. But the thing is, when it comes to the music industry or anything, but music, it's just like anything, like, it starts with recording, but if you're going to get your music out there, and I know we got platforms and things like that, but like you say, the resources. So I think it sounds good in the fact that, like, I want to own my music, but how are you going to leverage? So if you don't have a company to come by or a record label to sign you, how do you leverage all those things and still get the effects right. that it's going to cost without the resources? Right. And, you know, most of us, we start in the closet. Mm -hmm. You can get a room even with myself. Like, as I'm trying to get back, I never had a real plan for music, but I think ownership ties into business. And I think that we just got to understand that music is business. It's not, we like to think we're the artist, but, bro, you got to be, a, it's business because, mm -hmm. Like you said, if you don't, then you can end up being an artist. And we've seen the whole path, the whole path of artists. When you're an artist, like as much as I love Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne still doesn't really own nothing. Like he's he's rich, he's but you know he, yeah yeah. And I don't, I think you can consider him to be a unique case. I, I, mean, every, I mean, I think for every one Wayne, there's ten more um, young birds. I will say this, like but that. I feel like this with Lil Wayne because, like you said, it's been a while. He's been a game. He's OG. To me, outside looking in, I think he's doing everything he can to stay relevant. I'll say that. Okay. Hasn't he, like, since then, hasn't he, like, gotten his situation better? As far as, like... Like, yeah. going forward now? I think all... Uh, all that well, not, he, he did. Man. Well, he just... Um, well, yeah, he was, like... I think they kind of were... I don't know if he ever got paid from Birdman or anything like sure. that. But, yeah, but I think they just end up... You know, at the end of the day... These cases tend to seem more so of like, like you say, it sucks. We got to see it. But I just think it's just a constant cycle that I'm no longer surprised by. And I think we got to figure out, like, what's our real way of coming. But the thing is, like you said, it starts with unity. Because if we want to have ownership, we need to maybe start focusing on having our own. The dude with the studio need to be bringing the guy with the, with the artist. You know what I mean? We got That's how you got to create. You got to use the resources we have to benefit us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, but it's crazy. Dave Chappelle don't own it, but I'm not surprised. And I think you keep seeing it more and more often. Who really, like, Tyler Perry is about the only person who's really, from what I see, has his own... Yeah, but I think they're just generational. What What do you think? Well, well, just speaking because you were saying you're like you know artists. They are looking more to own, but it's like not all artists. Because mm -hmm. well, I know me, not. me personally, when I first started, you know, playing with the idea of doing music, just like everybody else, you're like, oh, I want to get a deal. I want to get signed. Because you initially, you you know, you think you've been seeing for years all the glitz and the glamour and you know, the big names, and it's like, but over time, because artists have been being more vocal about it, I was like, I came to a point where I'm like, I would have, why would I do that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. these people are sitting up here telling me the difference between being having a deal and the difference between owning your music. And I'm like, okay, the way I look at it, I'm small artist, will probably always be a small artist. So it would not make sense for me to sign paperwork to where. I'm adding all these other people that I have to cut into a deal. Whereas if it's just, I'm a small artist, even if I have a small audience, I can still make, you know, a comparable amount of, of money, mm -hmm. just, you know, yeah. of someone else yeah. with, a, with a deal and a much bigger uh, and I Yeah, but I think too, like say they all call deals for a reason. So I think it's not opposed to say you can't get a deal, but just gotta I figure out, you gotta figure out how to make the deal. Cause like, uh, I know, for instance, like when I was doing something about Nipsey Hussle, you know what I mean? His first deal wasn't that good, but then the deal he came around right before his passing, it was just a distribution deal. So he just partnered up with whoever was Warner, basically a major company, but they were just going to push it. Yeah, that's not push publishing. It, you know publishing what I'm is what you want to. So, like, they, they were just going to push it to a lot of the audience, but he still owned all his masters. Right, right? but right. see, my thing is, I, I think that we are. Many steps removed from, from no, no, no. Well, yes, but that's not what I was <laughs> say. The point that I was going to make was I think that at this point, 
we are several, several steps away from being able to implement the tactical steps necessary yeah. to actually achieve ownership. Yep. What I try to get across to people is you have to at least have that mindset going in for yourself. So it's, it's not enough anymore, in my opinion, to be someone who is going to get into the music game, the entertainment game, the content game, any situation, actual art, as in you're an artist, a painter, abstract artist, whatever, like Basquiat or something like that. Like if you are in a situation in which you have decided to commit your life to creating something, I don't think that it is no longer acceptable for you to be content with the idea that you are just going to sell your art and make a small piece of that while the bigger machine gets to retain the majority of the profits from that. Now, how do we curb that from taking place is one issue, but I think the first issue is if you're a young artist or even if you've been in the game for a while, you need to at least have the mindset starting right off the bat. Whatever arrangement I get myself into, this needs to be an arrangement in which I make, at the very least, a 41% to 59% profit versus, you know, not profit. I have to be the one who retains the majority of the proceeds for the work the that majority. I do. Definitely so, the majority. So, so the, so the thing, that's where, and, but to me, that's where ownership starts. Okay. So like, and I think far too often, us people, people who are in positions where you're coming from a disenfranchised background, and I, I get it. I know. I understand human nature. So I'm not faulting us. I'm not faulting people who are. I'm not faulting the artist, so to speak, because I understand the need to secure some kind of financial freedom that you've never been accustomed to thus far. You know, up until that point in your life. So I get it. You know, the human intuition for most people is going to be: these people want to give me five hundred thousand dollars. I don't even know what it's like to have two hundred dollars, right. alone five hundred. So I'm gonna take that five hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and then your art ends up making fifty million. So the thing is, even if you take the five hundred thousand, <coughs> it's about knowing your worth. The next time I get into a situation in which my art is being leveraged to make money, now my five hundred thousand is going to be exponentially increased. Now it needs to be two million. I want to at least. I want to eventually get to a point <coughs> where every arrangement that I get into. I don't care who you are. You need me as the artist to help leverage whatever you got going on. So I'm going to make the most, I'm going to make the majority of this and you're going to make whatever is left after what we agree on. I don't care whether you have the resources or not. It's about what I bring to the table. I get you. Uh, And I completely agree with that. Like all that makes sense. But I think too, like, like you kind of said, we several steps, right? And I feel like, because, you know, like with all this, man, it goes so many ways. What we're speaking on ownership, because like it's it's so complex, really. And like, but I feel like, especially being an artist and all that, like you got to start with the steps first. Of like, like in a basketball sense, you know what I mean. Like, it'd be nice to make forty million dollars a year, like LeBron. But bro, we got to start at middle school first. You need to start on just your dribbling habits. Yeah, we need to. You know what I'm saying? I think we just need to take a step back first and just like understand it, even from an artist standpoint, like. The rea- like be the reality of it. That's you know the reality of it is. It's like if you're an artist, like you gotta understand. Like before you even start thinking money, you should be focusing on like your product because mm-hmm. your product is not worth money. It's not gonna make it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, like we need to focus on okay, what I'm gonna do and understand that like every song ain't gonna come out. And ownership for me, I know personally, like I think the one main thing people should understand when it comes to ownership is that like true ownership that you're trying to obtain, it falls. It starts and ends with you. So, like, you know what I mean? You got to understand that, like, all the tough stuff that's coming before it, you need to be prepared for that. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So you need to be willing to go out here and put your – perform at that club even though it's only you and your homeboys in there. Nobody's Mm -hmm. showing up. Like, Mm -hmm. you need to do that with a consistent mindset knowing that, like, it don't look good right now. You know what I'm saying? And and establish the actual mindset of ownership because I think a lot of us tend to think – it can be a little easier, and <clears throat> definitely it's not. Like you say, yeah. ownership and financial wealth, freedom wealth, as much we're right. trying to get there, it's a worth ethic that comes that we need to really 
establish. I think we need to start with that, just like the working part. Understand, like, bro, we need to do everything in your power possible, even when it's good and bad. Like, stick to that. You know what I mean? And then once you get to the point, hopefully you can get to the point where your music is money, but that's like the that's like the icing on the cake once you start negotiating about your music, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I just, think this is like a good where we are now, like you said, we're several steps away. Mm -hmm. I think where we are now is at just the light breaking stage. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is, okay, this is what they're doing. All right? We need to stop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's literally where we are. I feel, I like, feel we, like, we yeah. need to take this step. Yeah, man, we need to bring it into the light. Yeah. And then tomorrow we can maybe try to sell so, it. Like, yeah. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Kanye. Thank you, Kanye. Thank you, Kanye, for opening people's eyes. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Prince. Yeah. Prince was a major, you know what I'm saying? But I, 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 yeah, I, I just think fundamental building blocks are important. And, you you know, the difference between, and, and I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a break this, because I hate to make it, I don't like to do these conversation in, in conversations in which I create a dichotomy between white people and black people. That's not necessarily what I'm trying to do. Yeah. What I'm trying to do. You ain't got to try, see? But, 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 I, I, I know because it it's, it's unavoidable. Yeah, it's unavoidable. <laughs> yeah, but, like, but, but I, I guess what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give people a template so that they can understand the 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 the, the sort of the the intangible psychological qualities that are imprinted in people who come up in different types of backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. It, and they, it is more yeah. about the, the causes. Like we we're looking at the effects. Yeah. But you gotta go to the causes. Is we, right. we can talk about the, the effects till we blew on the face. Yeah and, and, and the thing about it is like you you brought up the notion essentially of heart of, of, of work ethic and I completely agree. But the thing about work ethic that's tricky is you know the the, the 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 people in positions to give you opportunities, mm -hmm. they're going to preach work ethic to you um, so that you can just make it and be successful. They, they're not going to preach work ethic to you so that you can eventually own what you do and you no longer need them. Because you all they want you to always oh, well, need them. They want you to work harder. Yeah, they, 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 they want you to always need them. them but nah. my, my, my thing is, work ethic aside, what are the things that you need to be thinking about so that you can eventually get to a point where you don't need them anymore, where they need you more than you need them. You don't want to be a reality TV star or no, somebody no, no, like no, Flavor no, Flay no, no. who is past, well past your prime and you still need somebody like a VH1 or a Universal or Warner Music Group to, to cut you a check. What I'm and in the meantime, you look like a buffoon. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is work ethic, like, I guess it's just like just bringing that work ethic as in understanding like the process okay but here's my thing so okay. what, let, let me say, okay, so what i'm saying so what i'm saying is and obviously my my i i can speak but what i'm saying is okay so i'm saying work ethic is in let's just say you work at mcdonald's okay and now they're about to take minimum wage up to ten dollars an hour. So mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So Which is nothing. Nothing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying it's more than what they get. Right. <laughs> what I'm saying is what I'm saying is so <laughs> what I'm saying is up. what I'm saying is your work ethic should be defined by the fact that you know, I'm not saying that McDonald's is the best for me, but I understand right now this is the best for my situation. So I'm saying like if you're working in a McDonald's and I'm working 50 hours, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to work fryers, mm -hmm. I might not be getting $10 an hour. Mm -hmm. And I know, okay, ultimately I can probably work harder if I really want to make become a store manager or something like that. But I can take all them skills of fry, boom, boom, save my money. Next day, you know, maybe go get me a little truck or something, and then I'm going to start doing my own fries. Yeah. So what I'm saying, work that thing in the fact that knowing that, like, whatever you want to do, you got to make it happen. I'm not saying, like, going to McDonald's and trying to be the best mopper. I'm yeah. saying knowing that, like, I'm going to break my tail off to is, get about it this situation. People take deals. Yeah, people take say, deals because they yeah. are doing a lot of it for you. Yeah, the, the thing, the, what, what I want, what I want to, what I, what I presume is that Still to this day, there are far too many of us, to use your analogy, who say, I'm going to work at McDonald's. And I'm, <laughs> but the thing is, I don't, I'm don't think about it in, in terms of McDonald's, but I'm just using your analogy to make my point. Fast food. Like, yeah, I'm using your analogy to make my point. So it's not about any particular industry specifically. Right. But what I'm saying is, 
most of us nowadays still in 2020 when you got YouTube and no, I was about to say now we got information. But this like yeah, yeah. yeah well, so so in, in in this day and age when you still got YouTube and all of these different Should resources that you can turn to, can, yeah. a lot of us are still saying I'm gonna go into McDonald's when I can make that ten dollars an hour. No, no, not not only just that. But I'm gonna go into McDonald's and I'm gonna be a fry cook so that I can eventually become a McDonald's store manager. As opposed to saying, I'm gonna to go to McDonald's and be a fry cook, and in five years, I'm gonna to go to hamburger college so I can own my own McDonald's. Or I'm gonna go learn these skills so I can go and yeah. cook for myself. So, so my thing is, it, it's not, and, and I'm thinking, we're thinking big picture here, right? So I'm not necessarily saying, in five years, you're owning everything. No. But it's about how you approach the situation. And I think the longer you go into situations not having the right approach, you're prolonging, you're making the gap. You're making the gap between what you're you know, seeking and where you are. And that's why, like, why. That's why, like, I just say, like, analogy's life is like sports, because you know, I play sports. And so, yeah. you know, so life is, life is like sports to me. It's no matter where you start at. You got to have the right approach, right? But the right approach always comes from who? The coach. And so if you don't have somebody, I don't give a damn how good LeBron is, his approach had to come from coaches and trainers. So we need the right approach. But who the hell is coaching us? Mm -hmm. And it starts at home, parents, and, I, and I, no take no take away from nobody's parents, but, you know, our parents <laughs> oh, coach us. So they only so much. So it's like we need the right approach, but we need more coaching. We need better, you know what? We need better Speaking blueprint. Of coaching, there are – I've learned a lot from independent artists that are successful. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Russ is a very successful independent artist. Yeah. Um, Young Dolph, mm -hmm. is Dolph a yeah, yeah, very yeah. successful yeah, independent yeah, artist. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I would go and I would just study them. Like mm -hmm. I would just listen to what they be talking about. Listen, don't do this, don't do this. They gonna say this, they gonna Basically, say this. This is how I did this. Like you, they, oh, you have sorry. to have. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like there, there are. Coaches, there are people that are putting information out there, but like you said, because if we, if we go back to the causes, mm -hmm. you have this young kid who has been in poverty all his life, mm -hmm. who hasn't had the best influences. He's just impulsive. He's just trying to shine because mm -hmm. he see all the rappers shining. Mm -hmm. And when you see him in that room if, with this paper, and you tell him, okay, you can have this. He gonna be like, this is my one shot. Mm -hmm. Like if I get up and walk away from this, who's to say I'm gonna get this opportunity again? Because like you said, you might not believe in yourself that much, but you yeah. need to believe if they offering you this, but what you it? worth at least five times more. At least, at least. Though, cause like when you say it's my one shot, what like that holds a lot of weight. Like this, you one That's shot. That's how they be feeling. That was saying that you feel that, but like. My one shot might be like, this is my one shot where, boy, I got to make sure the next five years, I got to make sure I got back ends coming because I need my family. So, so this is my one shot to, you know, go get the homies, make a little change, go party, That's go get the chain, go get the cars. And then, like, this is mind. my shot to shine. Right. Right? Yes. Yeah. But, like, people understand, like, we all want to shine. But I'd rather have the sun coming out every day like it does every morning so. than to have it for a month and then they tell me in the next six months I can't have it. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? Like shine, you can shine, but if you focus on legacy, especially if you're talking about artists or whatever legacy, legacy allows you to shine your whole life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like you say, so artists it gets to the point where like I can't go to this club now. Now I done got fifty I done made a hundred thousand on the show tonight. I'm gonna take twenty and I'm gonna go to the strip club. And yeah. this it sounds good but like think yeah. about twenty you know some people take twenty thousand dollars and they gonna they gonna create a business from that. You right. know what I'm saying? And then some people think it's just twenty thousand dollars just to throw it up. Just to blow. That's crazy. But but my and so and and so that's what I'm saying. My thing is, you know, and, and this is a this right here, what I'm doing, we do videos like this, we speak on these issues. This is a drop in the bucket in terms of if there's one person who is in position and they might maybe catch this video. It's it's not really about tomorrow I'm going to go out here and I'm immediately physically doing things that are going to set me up for ownership. But I, I just feel like it starts, and, and you touched on it when you talk about in the home and all of that kind of things, your, in, your influences during your child-rearing ages and during the times when you're most susceptible and vulnerable to outside messages. I think that it's important that during those times, people are understanding that at the very, like right now, 
even if I'm not doing the stuff that's going to lead to ownership, I just have to be thinking about all of it. That's, it that's, to be that's the start. Out, the start out. is I'm thinking about it because it's not like we don't. You you still got artists now, ten years in the game. They don't think like that, you know. And it's 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 ridiculous yeah. because they're being their resources are being pilfered uh -huh. to make money and provide entertainment for three hundred million people in this country, and they see not a dime of that. Oh, worldwide. Yeah, and and the thing is like. Niggas is broadcasting internationally, <laughs> but and it's and, it, and it's just like how do how do we shift the mentality so that every day when I wake up, even if I have to sign this deal that is not advantageous to me in this moment, I know that I'm making incremental steps in my mind. The next thing that I do is going to be if, if something to me if if I do something right now that yields a 45, 65 split. Is that the math? What if I yes, yeah. Yes. So if I do something that yields me a 45, 65 split now, the next time that I do something, it's gonna yield me a you know 47, 63 well, split or something goes, like that. Though. Like no. for now in the industry, isn't it like everybody is pretty much normal if your first deal is terrible? Yeah, that's like, what it seems like. Basically, yeah, but you don't want to keep making terrible deals. Right, that's what I'm saying. But I, I think that's that's pretty normal. I mean, like they start bad and then they get a little better and they get a little yeah. better. But, but I mean, not really. From what I've heard, because I know I I really don't you know, study as much. As, that's why I already try, you know, focus on deals because it's not yeah. to it. But I know for a fact that most deals or a common deal is a three sixty deal. Oh, and, yeah. most, and most artists get caught in a three sixty deal where we give you money for a year. And so now you locked in, but the thing three sixty deal is basically okay. We sign you right, and we are gonna give you let's say five million dollars right signing bonus. Not only do we need to make that money back, but or anything you put your name. So if you create your artist apparel, we they get all of that everything. too. Yeah. So that's what the three C. So they make anything no, man, your you name attached to. You, and, and, you own nothing. And at not only that, but correct me if I'm wrong. Say they give you that five million dollars signing bonus. Aren't aren't you taking that money to finance everything else you need to do? Like if you need to pay for yes. a video or for a director. No, 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 they, they, they tell you that, but that's supposed to be not. That's supposed you to live your lifestyle and do that because it's yeah. $5 million. Right. Yeah, but that's, 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 not, that's, not, that's not the way everything. it works out, right? Most, I don't know. I have had $5 from, million. Dollars. From what I've seen, somebody get $5 million bonus. It's for marketing for, and stuff too, yeah. but at the same time, I'm going to get my $100,000 yeah. car, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, say you want to film a, a, a music video and the music you video is expensive. Yeah. That $5 million dollars that they gave you, well, you're going to have to use that to finance that. I would as say opposed it to, as, if I was going to them, yeah. like, doing the budget. No, 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 no. We're not a big I see, man, see, the thing, and the thing, yeah, but the thing is, like, getting out of that setup. And so, like, <laughs> for real. And, and so, and, but my, my thing is, it's about the values that are instilled in you when you're younger and you carry that with you as an adult. Tell me what is the difference between Jerry Seinfeld and Dave Chappelle? Color, unfortunately. Okay, which entails a lot of these but issues then, that were these the, environmental the issues. Thing is, the thing is, not to cut you off. Uh -huh. The thing I is, though, kind of deal here. the thing I'll is, tell you. You know, the thing yeah. is, but the thing is, like naturally, like think about it. We love the play sport, so naturally, we we just feel like. We gonna use our talent, and we gonna run to the person who can provide us for the talent. Like, yeah, yeah. I know, but that's the point of this whole thing. Yeah, is, I, yeah, I get that. What I'm saying is, so like, as I don't think that's ever like that's not gonna change. Like, oh, sure. You mean the? I'm saying the like, like, sports, really. like, like in sports, like ignorance. unless you get different amount of owners, it's always gonna be the same. No, it could change. It could change. I think the reason why it hasn't changed is because there's too many of us who don't know that we have the power to change. That's why I said we're in that's that the only true. That's, that's the, that's the only reason why it hasn't changed yet. It gotta become the norm. Do you think LeBron is the LeBron LeBron is LeBron because even and, and, and you can tell me all you want about, you know, black people coming up in fatherless broken homes and all that kind of stuff. LeBron don't know his pops. And he was still able to get to where he got because he was surrounded by the right people and the right values were instilled in him. LeBron cannot, LeBron doesn't have to be the only LeBron. Okay, LeBron is a unique case only because too many of his contemporaries don't know that they can do this. The only way that you can shift the pendulum in such a way that more people who create the art, more of the athletes, more of the artists, more of the musicians, the entertainers, who create the art can retain the majority of the profits that are based off their work. The only reason why they continue to be taken advantage of is because there's a lack of awareness 
there's a lack of an understanding that they don't have to not take the majority of the profits for what they earn. And you know what, I mean, for what they create. Well, you know, it sucks with that, though, because it's sports. And as much as that LeBron has me say he's swinging the pendulum, and in his realm of his duty and his work, where he worked, unfortunately, unless you're 6'8 and 260 and get win the championship, you can't do what LeBron do. Well, this, this is a, when we talk about more of us paying attention to other vehicles in order to secure freedom that's a separate conversation but the the notion of the right mindset is all encompassing and as you guys pointed out a couple minutes yeah, ago different levels. You always go to different levels yeah too. and there's no there's no difference between there intrinsically there is no difference between jerry seinfeld and dave Chappelle, other than in all likelihood jerry seinfeld when he was coming up someone taught him or he knew he had the knowledge to know okay my show is bringing in all of the ratings for this network when we can't when this show is no longer on air and y'all cancel us and and we start and, and we start making these i'm gonna make these syndication deals not you mm -hmm. like the jerry the show seinfeld ran on nbc right when the show got canceled I think they did some type of split, but the bottom line is Jerry Seinfeld makes the vast majority of the profits that come from the syndication of that show. That show ended in 1998, bro. Yeah. It's still yeah. running to this That's day. Crazy. He he doesn't have to work a day in his and life. He's not complaining. Yeah, so. he doesn't have to work, and it's it's no disrespect <laughs> against Jerry Seinfeld. He had the knowledge. Right. He had the education. Yeah. So my thing is. We can do, we have the capacity for the same thing. It's just about having the right mentality going in. And right now, even in 2020, we don't, at least enough to make a decent dent in this, have the mentality to fix it. And Ch Ch Dave Chappelle is a prime example. And he was somebody who was smart enough to create this and parlay it into a potential $50 million deal. And he still wasn't getting what he wanted out of it. Not from a work-life balance standpoint or financially. That's why he walked away. I think it, had, it it just it has to become a norm, and like you said, him speaking up or other artists speaking up, like it got to get into the collective consciousness. Because right now, the collective consciousness is like the immediate. Take my talent. Yeah. Do you want my talent? Do yeah. you want my talent? That's like yeah. what you know. what I'm saying yeah. rather than I got this talent, come to me. You know what I'm saying? It that's just not where we yeah. are right now, and that's where we need to be. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And if it and you know these situations like what Dave Chappelle said. You know, on on you know, you can y'all can go check out the video. I seen it's on YouTube. I seen it on World Star personally. Um, it's on his Instagram. Yeah, it's it, his last Instagram. Right, post. and the fact that he makes zero dollars off of that it's show crazy. Uh, to me is unbelievable. Crazy. Somebody so talented, so respected. That and Dave Chappelle is hip hop. Like he don't rap, but just his energy, what he's doing, because what he's doing is gonna affect just creatives. Period. He is, but it's yeah. like his energy has always been hip hop, and like even though I ain't, honestly, Dave Chappelle before it was kind of like the the black comedian you kind of associated more with white people. Not gonna lie, but over time, just like with his energy, his um, commentary, because his his comedy has really shifted a lot into more like he always did the social commentary, but yeah. it's like now it's more like. George Carlin type, you know what I'm saying? Like he really getting into it, and I think that's dope. Cause has that ever been? Has I think black comedians have always touched on social issues. I think Chris Rock did. Yeah, but I just feel like what the way Dave is doing he it, doesn't it's like, anybody like else, yeah, yeah, it's something else what he's been doing yeah. with these last few specials. Yeah, and um, yeah, I just think it's it's dope that he's doing it because he is putting a spotlight on it. Um. But like, yeah, I lost I my mean, train of thought. But I mean, like, he, he understands too. Like a lot of us now, we I'm understand sorry. that not only do we have the ability to change, but like you said, we have the resources now. Like you have power. You got Instagram. You got all social media. So like, he can get out his message in ways he couldn't ten years ago. So you know what I mean. So it's not you know you just gotta make yeah. the best with what you can now and, and like get his power. But like you said, they just show his. I mean, it's been a constant thing for the last twenty years. And like you said, we don't. We talk about more people always getting signed, who got signed, who getting signed, who got signed, who got signed. And that's why we're here. <laughs> As if the, and, 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 we, and, we put, and we put that positive connotation behind it. We just start having a negative connotation like, on yeah, it. Like, 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 like we, nobody well, signed it and be like, always, you signed your I've life away? I've always really? thought that 
contracts to me have always been weird. Like, yeah, it's, and like, it's and really like, I, 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 I like, I've always loved sports, but I can even remember as a child thinking to myself, a contract. Like, so I'm indebted to this individual. I have to do and say, I have to go where he tells me to go and do what he tells me to do because I play for his franchise. Like, to me, I've always thought that the very notion of a player signing a contract and being contractually obligated to do something is a little left field. But from a business standpoint, I understand it. But as we know, a lot of contracts can get a little weird. And I think that, you know, for those who are less educated and are less likely to know how to spot the difference between a situation going left and a situation staying A1, those are the, the most vulnerable population is always going to be the one that gets the most taken advantage of. Yeah. And I think nowadays we as people of color, black people specifically, continue to be the most vulnerable population. And, we do. and so it's incumbent upon us to understand how to not be taken advantage of, especially when we're creating art that is getting leveraged for billions of dollars on end. And just like you say, hey, we always got people in the industry who, you know, Rick Ross the boss. P. Diddy, all these people. And they doing and the same it. thing. They don't they 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 do But they, they partner. You know what I'm saying? Ross got partnerships. He's not like he owns a wing stop, but like wing stop is fast food. That ain't helping nobody. I love wing stop. But that's <laughs> that's put more dirt, that's put more hurt into the community. And I can't not because he really, yeah. you know, entrepreneur, I get the aspect. Yeah. But like you say, it's so deep and we gotta understand that like we these guys are celebrities and we tend to think we'll be like, oh Rick Ross, he owned this and that, but like, no, he put his name in bed. He's, yeah, he's still tired. What you see them doing, you like, oh, okay, that's what that's I need. How to do. I need to go where somebody else's. What did he really own? What does Diddy own? Else what does Diddy own? What does Diddy own? He oh, owned he owned Sean Cole Puff that clothing line. Nobody wears that. Jay Z owned Rockefeller. Wear, nobody wore that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's what he owned. But like, I had some rock. You know, Ciroc. That's yeah. I did in high school. I had yeah. you know, Ciroc, You know, he put your name to it. So it's partnership. So basically, we give you money for what bringing in your group of people that your demographic. Will, your demographic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They see they, your value. Yeah. What's your value? Yeah. You can bring in. But they're gonna tell you you need to own. Well, you do need to own. Yeah. See, but the, the thing is, I'm not going like... No, nah, that's good. Yeah, yeah I, need like, that. I need I'm, that. I'm not going to get upset at Rick Ross for owning a wing stop because I think above all else, we need to own more. We need to own so more. Yeah, yeah. So if it starts with me owning a Popeye's or a wing stop, I'm going to start a Popeye's or a wing stop, even that. though I am philosophically so opposed to that whole machine in and of itself, Popeye's, all of that. It's like me owning a Walmart. It makes me throw up thinking about the but idea of, Kiss, of, of owning anything like Jada that. Jada and uh, South P, they just, juice they started their juice, juice truck. Yeah. So I get it, like, it's like you can own a wing stop. I'm not saying against it, but like, you you can do something, I gotta be wing stop. Because you, your knowledge is wing stop. That's the thing. It's about freeing your mind so that you have the education like, to do no, something different. Money. I like wings. That's my favorite. I love wings. Hey, listen, one thing about Ross when he said lemon pepper, <laughs> yo, I feel him. I feel him. When he said lemon pepper, trust me, I feel Ross on the lemon pepper. <laughs> I even but well, you were touching on the whole um, understanding yeah. contracts. Yeah. And that was something that um, he mentioned in that, that sit down, too. The verbiage that they use. Read it. Go what, read it. Legally, read it, read so read they call it. That's oh, the legal, thing. Legal, it don't matter. Legal, I don't legal, care legal, if legal you. Legal. I don't care if you are a MD. You've been in school for sixteen no, no. years. You can't read them contracts any but more saying, than. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lawyer who literally has studied these terms. Nobody can sit down in front of them contracts <laughs> yeah, 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 and read yeah. them unless you have the terms. He. I think he was saying something about signing your likeness to be used throughout the universe. I'm like, oh, did you say your soul? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I said, hold up, heard that back? Yeah. Your likeness throughout the universe? Yeah, man. Oh, I, you saw your soul? Wait, so that was language in the contract? Was, likeness he, throughout yes. the universe? Yes. That's, that's insane. I said, what, sir? Yes, man. I don't know what that means, but I don't like the sound. Hey, man, it, it I know that. It ain't no I ain't signed nothing it that no, mentioned the universe. Wait a minute, why are we talking about the universe, person? <laughs> They don't no. got the first book, fifteen hundred all over the bank. They take the sound little paper. They ain't you don't read it. What you do? See, yeah. you, just, you just try to get. Right. You just try to get that fifteen hundred. I'll be yeah. they'll get my name. I just, yeah, I, I just, I just think that when we touch on when we touch on these ideas of ownership, I think 
you know, the, the most vulnerable of the people, the disenfranchised people. So my, my black and brown people, right? My black people, my Latino people, stop thinking about immediacy and gains from an immediate standpoint and just start thinking about long term. Like, I, I just think that situations like Chappelle further teach us that the powers that be, if you will, are going to continue to take advantage of us because they don't give a damn. They just want to be able to take advantage of the work. So the, the thing is, it is incumbent upon you to recognize when you have an opportunity to make something of yourself that doesn't involve you selling your life away. Mm -hmm. And so your, your, your mentality, your mindset right from the jump has to be, how do I take advantage of this opportunity so that in the future I can create something where I retain some semblance of the work that I put in? Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it can be simple things like I went to college, right? So it can be something as simple as I, I can't tell you how many black people I know I went to school with the beginning of every semester when that net check hit, Boom! I'm in the mall. I'm getting Jordans. Now, that's the only reason I'm here. And not, not, not a thing about it. Not a thing about it is, you know, I have a substantial amount of student loan debt, right? I'm not going to disclose the exact. I'm not going to disclose what the amount is. But what I will say is this: when I was in, when I was in school, and I think back on it now, could have seen that much. And and not only that, but come up. Not only that, but not only that, but this. If you just think about it in terms of stuff, if you just think about it practically in this way. I have substantial student loan debt, right? After I paid my rent and my utilities, all of my essential bills, if instead of going and buying clothes and shoes, I thought about maybe saving for four semesters worth and maybe getting with somebody else who saved for four semesters worth, going out here in Tallahassee, find a house that is available for purchase, maybe getting some kind of purchase loan, putting the money from the net checks together, so that you can own that property and rent it out to create a stream of passive income for yourself. At that point, you own that house, right? We're talking about ownership. Mm -hmm. So now I own this house. Mm -hmm. And not only do I own this house, I am having other people live in it and pay me to live in it. Mm -hmm. And I am not putting money into it in any kind of way unless we're talking about things like maintenance. So it's simple stuff like that that I am suggesting we need to start thinking more along those lines. To terms. have that type of thinking at a young age like that, you would have to have that would have to have started. Correct, but what I correct, but what I am saying is these other cultures of people they do that. Yeah, yeah, that's what they I do, it's and so it's it's, it's not far it's fetched. Necessary. It's not far fetched, but we have been the game has been kept away from us for so long because the idea is if you keep them wanting, they'll never seek to own because they'll always be wanting. So my thing is, if other if other races, other cultures of people can prioritize that type of mindset, there's no reason why disenfranchised people can't. There's no reason why. The only thing that separates them is the lack of knowledge. knowledge. So my thing is acquiring the knowledge. But I, I take, like you said, because like you said, this is all about bringing to the light and then starting with baby steps. But like, because you know, we have our conversations and like, you know, you want to be sensitive because I understand, you know, you're not trying to offend nobody when I say, but as uh, but like, you about to offend somebody. No, I'm not, I, I ain't gonna offend nobody because I really, because I, I get it. But what I really speak and speak is specifically to like our yes. community. Yeah. In all seriousness, like, it starts with accountability. And like, until we get that under control, understanding that like it starts and ends with us, and to the fact we can actually hold ourselves to what we stand on, what we speak on. If Black Lives Matter, <coughs> excuse me, if support local black businesses really matter, then we need to stand on that because all that will lead into ownership. A lot of them conversations are just it's just though. it's yeah. just talk. Yeah. And I and yeah. I and I'm and I'm a black business owner. And I don't hold no regret to nobody because I have I've been understood a long time ago. This about it's not about race. You know, it's about the product. And whoever the product is for, be it black, white, if they're appreciated, they'll get it. But if we being real about the situation, I'm just saying as us, me included, we have to really stand on support the low to support yeah. your homie. And don't go down there to your homie shop saying how much you gonna let me get it for. 
Because when we go to shop at Jordan to get Gucci's, it's not how much you let me get it for. Gucci want four fifty for that bag, you give him four fifty for the bag. But you come to me and you get mad, let me get it for the three fifty. Like support like we support anybody else. That's what it really comes down to. We gotta be real about the situation. I'm not saying we're angry, but like once we start doing that, we got a real chance because we are talented. We have a lot of things that we can build on, but we gotta stick to what we mean and say what we mean. So if you really support local black, support. Go support the homie down at the shack. Now, if the food ain't good, you got to let them know. I can't come back, but yeah. try to support. You know what I'm saying? And get our own revenue yeah. circulating. You know, we got to put it into our, like I said, but we can't keep it. Because the second we get it, even if I'm making fast money, I get it from the hood, but then I take it to the mall. And I take it to the, you know, to the to the Indian or every guy who owned the corner store. Yeah. And, and, you know, so it's like, I just say that, man. Like, we just got to dis... I'm glad we doing stuff like this because this is what, to me, what 2020 is about. This is what starts with what we're trying to break with Chappelle, mm -hmm. bringing up the conversation and having the light. Hopefully we can touch, like you said, younger people understand, like, we didn't have this platform when we was in high school. Only, if you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, this is good. People need to hear this. But speaking specifically to any and everybody, we know it's accountability. But specifically to the black community, the day we start to be accountable, and when they say accountable, it's just like if – you know, a cop, white cop guns down a black guy, we go to the streets. It's a lot of black on black crimes. Ain't nobody protesting. You yeah, know, ain't nobody, nobody ain't nobody yeah. black lives matter when But you know what when though? I, I gotta I gotta kinda disagree right there. There there is almost always somebody protesting. The news just doesn't cover it. I have seen people protesting in Tallahassee when we had our spikes. In well, the summer, saying, we like talking we about when we say uh, black on black, or we just saying yes, we, black okay. people do, but there's not going to be no news camera that don't fit the narrative. Well, yeah, and I'm not speaking. There's not, there's well, not coverage. Uh, what I'm that. not gonna, I'm black like, people, black people be mad I, about we, black okay, on black. Okay, I'm not want to speak on too because, like I said, the news. I don't even watch the news, and that's, that's I don't so even, global. But, they, but I know they don't cover. What I can't say this. What I say this then. I say this. From our daily interaction, you know what I'm saying. From the livelihood that we live on a daily basis, from the things we control. I know we should see, I think we need to see a little bit more in our daily lives, like with the people we interact and showing that, and we say black lives matter, then we need to, uh, it's a certain way we should treat, it's a certain way we should get with each other. And we understand it don't work that way. You know it doesn't that. Yeah. You know it doesn't. That, 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 it's, it works the same way that white on white crime works, Asian on Asian yeah. crime works. Yeah. People in close proximity Go do stuff to each other. They get into it. They, you know what I'm saying? So, so it's yeah, the, I, the, the, the point that I've always We made do, about, but we do like to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Yeah. We should. That shouldn't, what other people do shouldn't matter. You know what I'm saying? We yeah, should. that's it. The, the point that I've always made about that is the reason why it's, the reason why I feel as though it's more important when you talk intra communally about black people. Um, I think, you know, statistically speaking, I made this point before. Because our numbers are less, a lot of societal issues are more pronounced when you're talking about smaller groups of people. Mm -hmm. So issues like lack of education and a lack of an understanding of the importance of ownership and a lack of an understanding about how to go about securing financial freedom, those issues are most important for us to understand because issues of poverty and lack of education and just purely being taken advantage of are more pronounced because there's less of us to go around. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about a smaller pool of people, you're going to spot instances of negativity far more frequently because you're only looking at but so many, you know, m ms in a jar. I think know. it's that they just, they, they like to scapegoat us. They highlight it. Well, no, no, it's not, I know that's a separate issue. What I'm saying is it's important for us to, 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 to have a better, uh, to to embrace the notion of uh, 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 um, taking on the, the challenge of ownership because if you think about it, if I hand you a jar with a bunch of buttons in it and there's a thousand buttons in that jar, it's going to be harder for you to spot the 10 buttons that are out here not making the most of the situation because it's within a sea of a thousand buttons. Yeah. But for us, to use the same analogy, if I hand you a jar with 10 buttons in it, you're going to see the black button because there's only 10 buttons in the jar. And in that case, you see what I'm saying? In that case, you go, like you say, we're going to have. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't want. Because I, 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 I get what you said, like you said, because we need, like, what you're saying is very important. Like, what you're saying right there is very important. And like you said, the 10 buttons is basically what we would say you got. 
the tent. You gotta spot. You gotta. The, you gonna have the ones who acting more niggas than the ones acting as far as the person who's just trying to make better yeah, those are, those are separate issues though. Like what I'm saying is we're all in the jar. Absolutely, we're all I'm in the jar. So whether you got one doing right by the people versus the one who's not. The one who's not doing right by the people is easily pronounced. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's, yes. that's what I'm agreeing with. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, what we're, we're saying is like, we yeah. all get painted yeah. with I that was just trying to, because when you said, I was just running you kind of like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like that's what, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. I'm just trying to make it more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, we talk for hours on end about accountability, bro. That's just. A, <laughs> and it's like, oh, I don't know if I'm just like, what the accountability conversation is, is so complicated too, because it's like, okay, accountability is one thing. But when there is an active agenda to keep you ignorant from something, so then it's like, no, how no, much? I don't want to go down the weeds. No, no, we're not going to. But I would just say, I'm but just, it, I get that Accountability like, is like, it's like it's you're simple. born in a room and I keep you in this room the whole I your whole this. life. And then I say, oh, you're accountable for not knowing that it's something outside this room. At, at some point, at unfortunately, some point, you do it. At some point. But yes. am I not going to be a little bit more compassionate because... You was kept in this in this darkness all this time. Who you saying needs to be more compassionate? I'm saying <laughs> when, when you talk about when you try to make us completely accountable, like okay, well you just don't no, know. Well, he's, there's he's no not, active no, agenda. It's not necessarily about in a position. It's not head. about complete accountability. It's just about appropriate accountability. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Accountability. You can you can you can hold somebody accountable, but at the same time, you have to have some compassion for somebody who's when you, you you're actively being. I get Oppressed that. And I'm trying it, to be kept one of my situation. favorite, one of my favorite things, cause I heard from ET. I can't change. I can't change. I can't change a racist society, but I can change the way I move in a racist society. So when I say accountability, I understand all the things that being black. Like I understand that, like if I get pulled over by a cop, there's a there can be a chance that I can get shot or gunned down. Like that's the reality of it, cause I'm black. Like. You got strikes. So when I say accountability, like waking up knowing that the strikes aren't against you. So that's not, we don't need to discuss that. I need to discuss how can I move and understand that I got strikes on me. So that should kind of make people want to move a little different because you do have strikes. I think, I think we got too much. Cause I, you know, I want to be, I think there's too much of like, like you said, people want to say like, what they, uh, what up there? Yeah, like, it's a victim mentality. Like a victim, kind of like, I don't believe America was ever, the, it's never, it wasn't meant for it to work in favor of black people when it no. comes to the system, right? So that never changed. The so I just system think, was designed. So we should understand that, but understand that you still have opportunity, but I just think it's more important to understand you have strikes and you need to watch the way you move. In the age of information, now, yes, accountability. Now I'm like, okay, yeah. what's your excuse? Because Harry Tubman you know didn't have no this Instagram. Is the age of information, right? If Harry like, Tubman had Instagram, she probably could have been like, yo, then 10,000 people on video, she didn't have to come back. You can learn from the, the good you thing know? about it, you can learn from other people's mistakes now. We should. You don't have to be a Dave Chappelle and, and you know what I'm saying, in, in, in hindsight. You you don't anymore. That's it, it's like Jones. he did it, so you don't have to. That's just like Jay Z. I sold drugs, so you didn't have to do that. But it's like now that has to, that <laughs> yeah, has to become right. the norm, though. Like, well, that, like that. It gotta yeah, become yeah, uncool to man. not sign away your your intellectual property. Yeah, like, it gotta become uncool to do that. It's gonna like, get hard, like I said. As long as poverty is hard to sign with that money. Yeah, but you yeah. don't have to endure. That's the thing about it. Period. It's, it's not about like I just like you brought up the notion of compassion, and I do agree. But I've just been alive long enough that I am losing my, I am losing my capacity no. for compassion. <laughs> I, I really, I, I'm, you gotta take a few I'm days being, off. Yeah, of yeah, no, no, I, I'm, I'm honest. Like honest, I am honest. I'm just being honest. Like I'm, I'm losing my capacity for compassion because at some point you have to learn. I gotta meditate on compassion. Yeah, no, you just you, at, you, this point. At, at some point you just have to learn, and we all no, I am not going to sit here anymore. I refuse to sit here. And use my platform or use my voice to to continue a conversation about racism and white supremacy. I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. I don't need to do that okay. anymore. Like it's a wrap on that. Now, a lot of if y'all don't like it, I don't care. Go to another channel. That's not on. I don't care. Like 
it's not, I am not going to continue to feed that beast anymore. Yeah. Because it's, it's, there's no mystical force that's stopping you from watching this video and saying, okay, tomorrow I'm going to go out here and just move a little different. different. And, it's it. not, and it's not about taking it from point A to point Z right now. Maybe you go from point A to point B, that's point B go. to point D, point D to point J, but eventually you get to a point where you are in position to free yourself. Yes. And the only way that you can free yourself in 2020 is by securing perpetual wealth, economic freedom. And you have to be able to understand going in how to not let certain things take advantage of your work, period. And that's for my people in entertainment. That's for my people in college who are graduating with these degrees and going to work for these companies where they're helping the company's dreams come true, but not their own. You're getting paid $40,000 a year to do work, but you're not being paid commiserate with the production. Fortune 500 company, like, huh? It's, 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 it's everybody. It's all walks of life. It's all races of people. It transcends race, but it's more important to talk about the disenfranchised people because those are the groups of people who get taken advantage of at the greatest rate. So, Use situations like what what Dave Chappelle had to say and others like him, like what Kanye talks about very often as a learning as a learning tool so that you can better position yourself to at least envelop an overall mindset so that every day you're not out here not making gains towards securing your own freedom. And like you said, man, the victim for real, man, like we all come, uh, we all like guilty of that, but like that victim mentality for real, like, it has to go, like, if somebody didn't do this because of this and that, like, that doesn't change the fact that it happened. So you should figure out, like, okay, what can I do so I'm not going to keep being a victim? Yeah, but the, 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 the thing about it, damn, I forgot my train of thought. Oh, okay, I got it back. The thing about it is we already, I, I just, you know me, like, one of the things about me is I don't like feeling as though, I'm having to repeat and say the same things over and over again because at that point, I'm just engaging in an exercise in futility. Mm -hmm. Like if you're not listening, why do we need to keep talking about this? Why do we need to keep talking about the fact that we have to work twice as hard for the same thing? We know this. So you can either accept that and deal with it until the point where you get to a position in which you no longer have to live within that ecosystem or you can continue to complain about it, but you'll still be where you were 10 years ago. You'll be in the same spot because you didn't embrace the challenge that was unfairly put upon you, but put upon you nevertheless. Well, that's when you just have to decide, okay, who are we talking to? You have to decide, are, are, are we talking to the people that have let go of the, vi the victim mentality, that understand what we are and have and are now listening for, okay, what do we do now? How do we move forward? What do we, you know what I'm saying? But, but there are still a vast majority mm -hmm. that's just sitting there like just yeah i'm talking to everybody everybody but like as i told him once before we did a video it's like a large funnel the idea is to get in as many people as you can but you're not gonna get everybody it's not about getting everybody but if you can get one or two people who can say oh there's a point maybe tomorrow when i get up i'll go here instead of going here like i always do you've already made progress and it's as simple as that and you were talking about <clears throat> transcending race, right? Mm -hmm. And then we were talking about how a lot of this stuff has to start in childhood, in the home. So that makes me think about, okay, we think about disenfranchised people, mostly poverty, usually in the home is not, the, not the best lessons being taught, not right. the most guidance being given. So who's giving the guidance then? And that would be school mm -hmm. so now that when we're talking about transcending race this is beyond just well, black people school is literally brainwashing our kids for school college job, oh, yeah. job. you know they're oh, they're, yeah. they're 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 training that, them is, job job so job give me you know what i'm saying this issue is so deep especially coming to the community like it can go all night yeah i'm just saying it, right, trans, no, it does transcend no, race you're, you're, if, if you're not if you're not teaching your children this but, way somebody teaching but the them thing is not like like my boy Jay Stone say, it's crazy these days because babies having babies. They ain't like how we had our parents when they were 15, yeah. four, like, you know, kids, having kids is more prevalent than ever. Especially, and like, they get younger and younger. So if you're only 23 and you got two, three kids, like, you haven't even lived enough to really understand you how to project your to kids. So this whole thing, like, starting in the home is the truth, but the fact is, the home ain't really what it's been because the system is affecting the home. Right, right. Correct. And, and I was saying, they're going to school. <laughs> so, and school so is like, preparing them for that pipeline. That is absolutely correct. The school is preparing them yeah. for the pipeline. But my mentality is, 
some way somehow. My man. mentality is it's a funnel, man. That's and my then, and 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 yeah. and and, and it, uh, it's unfortunate we got a broken education system. All of that stuff is correct, but you don't change the world overnight. So no. you get two kids who start watching YouTube videos and doing all that this kind of stuff. Start. Yeah, this literally, that's literally practically speaking, that's what I'm talking this about. Start. And honestly, I feel like the ball is already rolling because if you look at, we're, we're how many generations from slavery? I don't know. Like, and like, we're already start. sitting here and start. we're sitting here having these conversations. Like, yeah. the ball is already rolling. I feel like we're doing what, you know, we need to be done. Hey, and it's gonna listen, man, bottom, bottom line is we, we need to be able to control our art is about owning what you create. It's about being paid commiserate with your production. Like, I want to close the video. We've been going a long time, but you know, it, it goes by quick. You know, it goes by kind of quick. I know, but like, even like my college people, and that's the group I fall into. I fall into the college group. Like, don't be afraid to walk into that building when you got that job interview and they want to offer you $32,000 a year. Do the market research. Look at what people in your area are being paid within that industry for the amount of years that you put in. Don't just accept pennies on the dollar. Because they're going to offer it to you and they will let you take it and they're going to run the other direction while the company makes millions of dollars of revenue per year and you're getting paid pennies on the dollar juxtaposed to the production that, and the consistency that you're putting in. Don't let them get you. Tell them I want 40. And then when you go to your next job, tell them, no, damn it, I want 50. Yeah. And it's just about making... Self-esteem plays such a yes, big part. It's, it's, about, it's about making incremental gains towards the final solution. And if you get some money in the streets, man, I know y'all get fast money out there. Take that ten thousand dollars. I think take ten thousand dollars to get your subway. Like <laughs> for real, yeah. Ten thousand dollars for subway, like jewelries and cars and stuff is good. But if you actually get someone, I don't care how it's, it's not my business. But if you actually a person who has twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars to maybe forfeit up in the night of the strip club, understand that like zero times zero gives you zero. So once you, <laughs> so once you throw forty thousand dollars. That doesn't come back. That lady's taking that's gone. Yeah. But now if you take the twenty thousand dollars and times times one, meaning get you a subway or two subways at twenty thousand dollars, twenty times one, you right. get twenty. So now you can turn that twenty times yeah. two to forty thousand. And I'm trying not to be funny, but yeah. I'm being serious. And it's all going for everybody. No, that's, you're right. Yeah. That's my. Only that's thing my is, right. you take that. You take that fast money to open a subway. You're gonna have to open a laundromat too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, guess what? I know what day we show two things for certain. People always got dirty clothes and people always hold me. <laughs> no, you don't get what I'm saying. I, though, about yeah, the right, 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 you got to watch that money. Clean, clean that, that money. Thing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Subway is the budget. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like that. Dirty money got to clean it quick. Yeah, for sure, man. But, but, man. That's that's the lesson on this one, man. We're going to go ahead and close it out, man. Another episode of Conscious Approach Podcast is in the books. Episode number 26, man. That This is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart personally. That's why there can never be too many episodes where we talk about ownership. Because I was about to say we could we could talk about this. We really could. Before, and I think this yeah, is like the third video where we have, this, is the time. this is actually like this the third the video where we have commented on things like this. Really? And the thing is, like, great, go ahead and march and protest in the streets and go ahead and talk about reform and blah blah blah. Go ahead and talk about all of that stuff. It's great. That is not going to change your status as a disenfranchised yeah, person in this country. It's not going to change it. The only thing that can change that is you. And you're going to have to understand that my worth is going to have to be equally equally contributed to by whomever is providing me with an opportunity. And then after a while, I am providing myself my own opportunities. I become the bearer of my own finances. And that's the we, only way that's going to stop really a lot of this. Like, lay out exactly what's going on? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Dave Chappelle, he was probably more clearer than a lot of people. But mm -hmm. like, because there's a lot of young people that want to do music right now. So I don't know if they really understand what those artists are complaining about when they come out and they're saying, they you know won't. what I'm saying? It's hard. It's, you can't yeah, like, you can't they really, it. like, to really understand what they're complaining about is that they don't own, like, yeah, do they know what that means? You won't, not, I you won't know until you, till the money gets involved. That's the only time, it, only, it only matters once we start talking dollars. 
Like I own every track, every music you make until it gets to a point where somebody might say you can make money off of it. So, you know, until it gets to that point, you're never going to understand. So you keep chasing and then you might mess around and just be getting up with one song pops off. And then that's, they know that's, that's when that transition starts. But it's hard because you think about ownership, but at the same time, you're thinking about signing bonus. You're thinking about mama. You're thinking about all this. So, if you're an aspiring artist, go and, and look and research independent artists Gucci and research man. publishing okay. marketing Look at Gucci. just yeah all yeah. of that and then you will kind of understand what is actually happening because i feel like a lot of these words and terms that have been thrown around i don't even know if it's really mm -hmm. sinking in mm -hmm. and then you you were you were wrapping this up weren't you no i was <laughs> you keep going though you know because and it's well, because just, it's this, so much this was so this much was less, to talk about. well, yeah. I mean, the topic to me was less about this music industry specifically, and it was more about using that as a cautionary tale and extrapolating that to understand how important it is yeah. that you it's own just, your work. It's everything's so loaded, like you're saying. It's like so many. Yeah, it, roads you it's, can go it's, in it's these a layer, conversations. It's definitely so a layer, it's it's a deeply layered conversation, but no. you know, at the end of the day, you have to <clears throat> be able to, and you know, again, not everybody is going to catch that. But it's just about having people to at least begin to transition their train of thought so that they can start even thinking about the idea of owning something, in, you know, throughout their daily life. I see progress. Yeah. I see a lot of independent yeah. artists. Like, pe people are starting to understand, like, all I have to do is turn on my phone. All I got to do is upload yeah. it to this platform. Yeah. Basically, all you, you have, if you can get, if you can establish an audience for whatever your talent is, whatever your, or a clientele, whatever it is that you do, you don't need. I'll tell you what, man. Y'all don't have to follow me, but, you know, PVO is a black owned, completely owned the ship. <laughs> so this hat and this hoodie, it starts and ends with me. And that's just how it goes. You can do the same thing. You wear your shirt, wear your t shirt, that's it. It's ownership. Yeah. Now, if it goes to a bigger level, that's a different story. But at the end of the day, if it came down to it, Nothing would get signed if I don't say yes or no. Right. Period. Same yeah. with my music. I'm just I don't I don't want a record deal. But yeah, you know, I, I can use all the same platforms. Right. Yeah. Distribute it. It's just myself. about man. I think we just need to take take time and just really start focusing on what it is that you really desire and if that's something that you really and have need. confidence. Yeah. yeah. Confidence. In, in your talent. We need people that. would not want your talent. They would not be offering you money. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what we, we got to understand. When somebody comes and offers you money, you should be like, "Oh, I'm money?" Okay? Like that's what you let me know. Mm -hmm. You offer me a million dollars. Okay, you let me know I'm worth 10. Well, you know, yeah, but they they offer you the resources too. Like it's more so money, it's more so You easy. paying for the resources. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. You, you, they ain't giving you nothing. Y'all think it's a joke with these artists, man. Look at G Herbo. Look at Casanova. These dudes who got big names in the game. And G Herbo, you know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't see a lot of rappers, artists out right now doing this quarantine time. It's serious. This is time for real. If you're an artist, whatever, ownership is important. Look at a lot of these artists. They're not doing nothing right now because they're not making no money. They don't own nothing. Yeah. Where the money coming at? We just got value. Value ourselves. Not. We be more concerned about looking like, good, having yeah. time doing because we broke and we look good. Yeah, that's it's, it. It's I think it's DNA. It's, we got it worked out. <laughs> I think it's a, it's it's easier said than done, but, yeah. I, but I do think that the idea of just approaching life on a daily basis from an owner's mentality is something that is easily implementable. Yeah, and I think that people can do that. And so it's not, I'm you know, I'm not in like I'm not a musician. I'm not in the music industry. I can't give you those keys because I don't have Same them. Same thing, right? Though. But the thing is, Content but creative. yeah, right, exactly. And so that's where I'm going to come at it from is that standpoint, and it's just about. You know, the things that I did to get this done, I'm not indebted to anybody, you know? So it's just about knowing that you need to approach the thing every day from an owner's mentality. We can all do that. We can all each be individual owners. Even if you got a penny to your name, just think every day when you're walking outside, I am an owner of my own enterprise. That's where it's, it, that, that literally is where it starts, honestly. And I think that we don't think along those lines. We think, along the, lines, we think along the lines of, who can give me an opportunity, you yeah. know? And, and what do I need to do in order to get that opportunity from you? 
what so might even train in. That, the, yeah. my, that has to switch. That's the thing about it. That yeah, that's the switch. idea about it. So that I mean, personally, that's what I take from Chappelle. People like Kanye, things like that, speaking directly to the community that I come from. That's what we have to start thinking about. Um, even if you get in the professional money, if you in corporate America, if you on Wall Street, wherever the hell, I don't. It doesn't matter. It's just about being able to get paid commiserate with the production and the consistency because right now it's completely lopsided oh, wow. and it's like we're putting it's like we're we're so <clears throat> desperate for opportunity that we're busting our rump but the gain is here and the work is here but the compensation is way down here yeah, but you know what i'm saying so crazy. It's desperate, just though, the way it's hard to see it yeah, yeah but I, it, people I, it's, that do the least make the most money yeah it's crazy but that's america's a meritocracy and so you yeah. just have to be you just have to get in line you just have to do what you talent need talent is the new cotton <laughs> it just hit me talent <laughs> is the new cotton yeah. i'm trying to mark that all right with well, that talent is the new cotton man. Talent and, and on that note we're gonna go <laughs> ahead and yeah. Yeah. sign off again but uh you can you know what i'm saying right. you can find me on instagram at jv wins you can find me on wherever, wherever else I'm at. I'm at Facebook. Search the first and last name. The website is ConsciousApproach.com. The YouTube channel is Conscious Approach. The entire content library can be found on the YouTube channel. Please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to grow the community. That's the point behind it. I'm fully committed to the platform. So at this point, I'm trying to grow the community and I'm trying to, you know, you know, speak messages and, and put content out there that I think is something that the people should hear. Um, you know, whether you want to hear it or not, whether you agree or disagree is beside the point. But these types of messages, in my opinion, need to be out there. So, you know, we just kind of trying to spread the gospel a little bit, you know, no pun intended. And um, you can find my girl Tight at... Tightness underscore rights, W-R-I-T-E-S on Instagram. Um at Dopealicious Angel on Twitter, Tightness Rights on YouTube, and I'm about to drop a five freestyle in about two weeks. So follow me on my Instagram, and you'll see that. Oh yeah, I know. Video P to PVO dot apparel Instagram, uh, PVO dot store. Yeah, you just type it in on the Google, it pops up. We may, we may be rising up a little bit. But in seriousness, man, yeah, just doing some music too. So we got some things working, man. But, yeah. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and keep doing what we're doing, man. Constant Approach is here to stay, you know. So we are going to keep talking about ownership. It's not going to be all we talk about, but it is going to be an ongoing theme, you know, until you know, we start, start to see things kind of gain some traction. I'm just trying to be a part of the change. We got to get, we got to get, definitely got to get like a theme song by this time. We got to have some kind of intro song or something. Okay, I'll get, I'll get, get the work on, on that. Yeah. <laughs> like a little yeah, intro yeah. song. We're going we to get the work on that. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I feel like this is good, though. This is good, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, people need conversations like this, man. If you're listening, I hope you can take what you don't feel offended by and you it. That's, that's all I can say. Yeah. I it was a little. It was. It was. No, I was good, but you know, some people it just. Can't go some people just hard to see. You saw. Some people just don't see it right there. Some people just don't. That's see okay. It. I don't some mind. people just see negative, no matter what it is. Yeah, yeah. That's but, that's okay. That's fine. That's they, fine. they watch the video. That's all. That's yeah. all it takes. It starts somewhere. So, come as you are. Come yeah. as you are. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah. So until that next time, we will see you later. We out of there. Peace.